Hey, it's Frank from Oxygen Guy, and this is my uh, near-death experience story. So, with that, let's get started. I'll try to keep this as condensed as possible, and that way you'll be able to watch it all the way through without saying, man, I wish you'd have sped it up a bit. So, uh, here it is. This is what happened. Uh, with that in mind, okay, um, I was uh, having some issues. I thought it was my acid reflux, and I I went to an urgent care facility, <clears throat> and they, they told me, uh, yep, it's your acid reflux, but we think you should switch medications and try this medication. You should be in good shape. Go a couple of days and come back in if you need to. So I said, okay, well, it's been about a week, week and a half here, about a week and a half. And I said, all right, I'll give it a couple more days and see if it gets any better. I was having problems sleeping. I was having all kinds of stomach issues. I was just feeling really horrible and um, I was having trouble sleeping. But yeah, either way. So I go into work feeling horrible that night and the next night and the next night and barely getting any if practically no sleep hardly whatsoever but um basically with that being the case i had to sleep it was getting so bad that i had to sleep sitting up because if i laid down flat my oxygen was cutting off completely and i couldn't breathe so that was a pretty scary experience i've never experienced that before it was I guess the equivalent to actually drowning because you just lay down and everything just went zero so yeah that was getting worse and worse and and then finally the breaking point came the the night and I went in I went into work and they said you've you've been in terrible shape for days and days and days and days and I said you need to go into the emergency room and go see somebody and I said well I really don't want to miss work and I especially don't want to do it over some acid reflux. I I don't want to mess with that. I mean, it just it seems stupid. So no, I they think it's worse. I think it's worse. Everybody thinks it's worse. So okay, fine. After work, I mean I'm barely getting my I'm dragging all over the place. I said, I'll go. So I drag myself into the car, I go to the bank. I pay a couple bills, I grab my chargers, I get something to eat, I take a shower, and I go into the hospital, the emergency room. I look around, there's nobody there. Kind of odd, because with our emergency room, you usually see wall-to-wall -wall people. But it was late, we're talking 3.30 in the morning. So I went in, and um, I saw the nurse at the counter, at the check-in counter, and I said, I I don't know if I'm supposed to be here or not. I Probably not. And I said, if not, just tell me to get out. Just say, get out, Frank, and I'll leave. I said, not a problem. She said, well, what's wrong? And I told her what was going on, and she said, well, give me one minute. I went in, sat down. They took my weight. They asked me some questions and started doing my blood pressure. And I said, it's okay. You can tell me to go. I get it. At that point, I was kind of hoping she'd say, you know what, you don't belong here, get out. And she didn't say that. She said, no, you, you belong here. We're going right now and on our way to the ICU. And at that point, just hearing those words, you know, you know, you belong here, there's problems, blah, blah, blah. At that point, you start having your own little breakdown. And, you know, life starts speeding up in a hurry because you go from living your daily life to hey you're you're dying okay um that was rough <laughs> it was really rough and I had I'm not gonna lie I was completely lost it flipping out and as we head to the ICU and they're pumping me full of different medications and stuff and doctors and nurses people are coming in and nothing's working. They're like, oh, 
that's not good. And they said, well, let's get permission for this special medication. They had to get people to sign off for it. They had to call around, find out if it was available. So they come in, they give it the first dose, and, and um, here we go. The heart rate is dropping from 200 or some beats per minute. It's dropping, it's dropping, it's dropping. It takes a little while, but it's coming back into normal rhythm, and everybody's like, this is excellent. You're doing great. I think we're, we're, we're in the clear. And we're, we're like, but we're going to give it a little bit. And we're just sitting there and <clears throat> all of a sudden, all of a sudden it's, it's flying up. It's skyrocketing back into the 200s. And um, wow, at that point, everybody's just looking at each other like, oh man, <laughs> did this really happen? Yeah, it did. It really happened. So with that being the case, <clears throat> now we're dealing with um, back into the high beats again. So he said, uh, let's try again. I said, we'll give you another dose. And if this doesn't work, we're just going to have to manually shock you. Manually shock me? Really? That doesn't sound painful. <clears throat> Not painful at all. So I said, yeah, do it. And, course this medication when they told me about it now that I'm getting two doses of I had the first dose now I'm getting the second dose the side effect was death <laughs> that they would put me down so to speak and then hit me at the paddles and bring me back up so yeah I know it's getting kind of confusing there because they were saying about doing the paddles you know the electric anyways and then they were saying about doing the electric after just poisoning me to death basically uh, so needless to say <clears throat> I get the second dose of medication and I'm I'm sitting there we're all bored to tears half hour 40 minutes goes by and my heart rate is slowly dropping slowly slowly and they're like wow this is taking a while and I'm watching this crappy show on TV something about antique cars eh, it wasn't that crappy either way so I'm watching this show, and um, I fall asleep. At least that's what I thought it was. I thought I fell asleep, and um, turns out I died for two minutes. That's what I was told, approximately two minutes. So needless to say, I wake up, if that's what you could call it, and I'm in this black abyss. I can't see anything. It's very peaceful, but I can't see a thing. So at that point, I'm I'm calm. I mean, you really don't. I didn't have no clue of the situation, and I wasn't like I'm in a hospital. It wasn't like, hey, I'm dead. None of that. Just complete black and peaceful. And then out of nowhere, this pinpoint of light above me, way above me, it felt like miles away. And I'm looking up, and you could just barely make out something and the pinhole gets larger and larger and larger and <clears throat> I could make out these tiny little people up there and I could hear this sort of you know little raspberry screaming and I, I can't understand what it is and <clears throat> I'm looking the hole's getting bigger and I can see up there and these people are screaming, come back, come back. But they're all together, so I can barely make it out. And I'm, and they're just screaming, screaming. I'm like, hold on, one at a time, one at a time. I can't understand you. And someone's screaming, come back, come back. You know, and at that point, I'm like, what? And I can barely make them out. And, and they're like, come back. And I'm like, I'm coming, just one at a time. I, I'm trying, I'm coming. I remember saying I'm coming because it was like I was swimming up. Imagine swimming up from the bottom of a well full of water or something, black water. And I'm swimming up, and I'm swimming up. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, boom, I'm back in reality. You know, and all these people are around me, and they're freaking out, and there's beepers and noises going off everywhere and they're screaming holy cow you know wow I mean just people freaking out 
And at that point, I'm dazed and confused because I was in another place, if you want to call it that, and now I come back to all these people freaking out and everybody's just doing their thing as doctors, nurses, whatever. And um, they're like, welcome back. And I'm like, yeah. And apparently I was, the medication worked and they shocked me back into, back into rhythm, brought me back to life, which honestly, I thought I would feel it because you see it on TV and these people get hit with the paddles and it's like clear and the body comes flying up and there's this loud noise and you know, I didn't feel a thing, not a thing. They expected burns on them. Didn't notice anything except for the redness of them pulling the sticky patches off the front and the back, which is how they do it. The sticky patches with the electrodes instead of using the paddles now, at least for what happened to me. The worst part of that was truly when they pulled it off because they shaved. But it seems like every time something sticky came near me for the EKGs or anything else, it's like they would shave, but the, the patch always seemed to go to the left or the right, just where the hair was at. And, you know, and even then, to have these patches on your back for a couple of days while you're under observation, hair grows back. Let me tell you, it was miserable. <laughs> every time one of these patches came off, it just tons of hair and pain. I have a new appreciation for these bodybuilders and stuff that shave themselves. It, it seems like such a smart idea. Uh, wish I'd have done that before going into the hospital. <laughs> so, needless to say, eh, I've come back. They're still doing tests, and everybody and their brothers coming to take blood and such. But uh, it was interesting. Because with that being the case, I uh, got to experience the whole hospital from the inside. You know, I wasn't just visiting to see customers. I was actually going there to experience it for myself, to be on oxygen, to have all these different tests done, including the catheter when they look at your heart, which uh, that's quite surreal. It was kind of like being a fly on a giant fly tape. Where you're just kind of and there's these big papers and the stuff and you're just trapped in it and while they say don't move and they're looking at your heart but uh yeah definitely interesting as far as the whole experience goes you know I've been dealing with the medication I've actually been back to the hospital again for the same thing AFib which is basically when your heart decides to go into high speed and Every time I see the doctors, the whole time there, subsequent visits, everybody always asks if I'm doing drugs or alcohol, and I, I tell them I'm not. I'm just, I guess I'm just boring, but, you know, I'm, I'm not a drinker. I'm not a, a drug user, but they, they still, they have to ask, they say. And um, the first time around, they had no clue what caused it. The second time around, it started again. They, they believe it's a genetic condition, is what they believe. And they, they want to try to control it with medication. So, yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> but here's the thing. Sorry, it took so long to get to this. It made me realize a lot of things. Life is short. So, if... Uh, you got something to say to somebody, you're getting in an argument, you know, you think about it, is it really worth it? Can we just work this out? Because otherwise, you might not see him tomorrow. Might not see him the next day. It, it, it really shot that home for me. And, and as far as what you're doing, are you happy? Can you do better? And I don't mean, you know, I understand. You go to your, your job and say you don't like it. It's crappy. I've had crappy jobs plenty of them so you go to work and you put in your time it doesn't mean you can't carve out a little bit of time to try to make your life better you know maybe you're you're getting yourself educated on how to I don't know be a airplane pilot or maybe you're you're learning how to do graphic arts or maybe you're learning how to shoot YouTube videos so you can try to help people with their medical needs and stuff or tell them about your 
your near-death experience. <laughs> but uh, yeah, here's the thing. <laughs> you know, your kids, hug them, tell them you love them. Your loved ones, tell them you love them. Your friends, because you might not see them next time. And if that's the case, you know, at least you knew you did what you were supposed to do that day. Be, be nice to people, don't be rude. Try to try to do the right thing. No one's perfect, but try to do nice things. Even if it's just a, you know, helping out an older elderly person do something, you know, help them, you know, fix something, help them cross the street. Maybe just checking on a neighbor, you know, hey, are you okay? Can I help you with your sidewalk? You know, shovel that sidewalk for you or whatever, just to help out do something decent be a good person and as far as what happens in the end I I think it's more along the line of peace of mind you know we can talk about a higher power which I do believe in but at the end of the day and the higher power is around us I believe but here's the thing I'm here all the time 1000% and I have to look at myself in the mirror. So uh, what am I doing today to, to be worth it to me? You know, everybody else comes afterwards. I mean, truly, it's first, it's you. You see yourself in the mirror every day and your kids, they're, they're the close second. You can say you put them ahead, but you, you can't you don't have a choice if you don't take care of you you can't take care of your kids or your friends or your family so yeah take care of you do good things be happy that's it <laughs> all right now you can go so that's the story it ran on a little long but um i'm glad i could tell it if um you'd like to say something nice great if you don't Eh, have a nice day.